Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video unboxing and first impressions look at the Insignia 11.6 inch Flex Windows 10 tablet. This is a 2-in-1 convertible tablet that features a touchscreen display, and it's actually an impressive full HD resolution uh, at 1080p, and also features a detachable keyboard and a trackpad. Otherwise, the price is the most impressive thing about the Flex 11.6 inch Windows tablet. We've already checked out Insignia's 8 inch Windows tablet about two years ago, and just like that one, this is priced very affordably at under 200 bucks. And the street price lingers at around 130 on Amazon, which makes it one of the most affordable uh, kind of current generation uh, Windows 10 tablets that you can find on the market with actually better than expected specs. So again, that includes an IPS 1080p display. You have two gigs of RAM. It's running on the Intel kind of Cherry Trail processor uh, that is quad core, and it's uh, technically the Intel Atom. And it has 32 gigs of built-in storage, expandable via a micro SD card. It also uses USB Type C, which is the latest generation for charging and for ch file transfer. Features the essentials, including a camera, five megapixels. 2 megapixels on the front, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So obviously the box right now uh, is actually a refurbished model, which is why you can see that it doesn't look uh, entirely brand new, but uh, I haven't really taken it open and uh, checked the contents yet, uh, which is why this is going to be our unboxing and first impressions. The back here features some basic information, including how the tablet looks once it's stocked. Uh, some of the cutouts here are just for the serial number info, and again, dimensions are located on the side. Again, USB Type-C charger and setup guide are in the packaging. Looks like there are stereo speakers, it has a 10-point touchscreen for multi-touch, has a G-sensor, has an ambient light sensor, a gyroscope, and an e-compass. So all the sensors are located inside. So let's take a quick, quick look at what you have in the box. And it seems like right on top we have just the tablet itself. And it seems like the keyboard has actually been already attached onto the tablet. And we'll take a closer look at this in a second. Flipping open this smaller box, we have access to what looks like the Type-C charging cable. Wow, this is kind of interesting. It's Type-C to Type-C. So you can use this to you know, transfer data out of a, a Type-C smartphone and also plug it into a Type-C port on the Insignia tablet or on something like a MacBook. Anything that uses a Type-C or a Thunder bolt port. This is both for charging and high-speed data transmission, and it's a reversible cable, which again is the latest generation. Really impressive on such a low-cost tablet. Here's the wall charger, which also takes a USB Type-C instead of full-sized. Uh, so that's a pretty unique bonus that you get. And that's more or less it. Uh, in here there is a quick start guide slash instruction manual, and uh, again, since this is a refurbished model that has been previously opened, you can see some of the packaging that was, I'm, I'm guessing, used to separate the tablet and the keyboard uh, back when it was brand new. So that's pretty much it. Let's set this off to the side and just take a look at the tablet. So on first impressions, the tablet is actually a lot heavier than I thought it would be. Everything is made entirely out of plastic, which is expected on a low-cost device, even though the Insignia 8-inch tablet is made out of aluminum. Um, however, it feels surprisingly hefty and gives a nice weight uh, in the hand. You have some branding by Windows and Intel, which is, again, the processor. On the side, you have access to some of the ports, including micro, micro SD for connect for expanding the memory. There is that USB Type C, which can also be used, uh, you know, if you have an adapter into a full size USB. And there's also a microphone, what looks like a mini HDMI port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is nice. Relatively slim build. You can see here part of the weight uh, thickness is because of the keyboard dock. That actually gives you a full size USB when you have it docked into place. The back here features a camera, and the other side just features, again, a full-size USB thanks to the dock. So the dock gives you two USBs, but without it, uh, the tablet itself does not have any full-size ports, which I guess is expected on, relatively, on a relatively slim build. So let's flip this open, and we are greeted to a very glossy display, which is made out of... Uh, I'm, it's a little hard to tell if it's actually glass or if it's plastic. Definitely feels not as hard as Corning's Gorilla Glass. So that's one area where they were able to cut costs. But the bezel size you can see here is actually relatively slim, which is good. The front-facing camera on the very top, Windows Home key, which is capacitive and only accessible when the tablet is detached, since you can see right now it's a little hard to press. The hinge feels relatively sturdy, and the keyboard here gives us access to a pretty traditional island or chiclet style 
uh, inspired by you know Apple many years ago. And on the very bottom here, you have just a traditional trackpad, which is a click type that depresses entirely when you want to click on it once to save on space. Relatively nice size for the palm rest, considering this is still a small computer, and you have a nice kind of portable working experience, which again is one of the areas where this uh, two-in-one excels. You can use it for play and for work. Come, let's try powering on the tablet. Let's see if there's any power at all. And with a bit of luck, it should turn on. So indeed, there seems to be a bit of juice. And basically, the power key is located on the very top next to the volume rocker you can see located on the side. Powering this uh, tablet on should be relatively quick. Again, it's a clean install of Windows 10. So we've detached the tablet. Uh, I want to mention that 32 gigs of storage is a little low for Windows 10, but it runs all right if you don't plan on installing too many apps and programs out of the box and you want to move some media content onto an SD card, onto a thumb drive or a hard drive, then it's going to be fine. But if you're trying to run Photoshop or a ton of different apps that require lots of space, then that's an area where these two-in-one convertibles may struggle, especially at this low cost. So here we have the main screen it booted up in what seems like under 20 seconds or so relatively quick it does support windows hello if you want to unlock it by a fingerprint sensor that you can purchase separately or by a facial recognition camera that you can purchase and uh, we can again access the home key here just by tapping on this once uh, windows 10 is not quite as finger friendly as windows 8 but there is a tablet mode that you can access to have act to kind of go back into this uh, tile format where everything is slightly easier to press as you can see here. Seems relatively fast on first impressions but then again this is a very clean install without any bloatware at the moment. There's Cortana it seems and uh, all the essentials should be should be here. So anyways we'll do a bit more testing of course and come out with a more complete review soon but this seems to be again a very good value for the money if you're looking for a very low cost Windows 10 tablet for work and for play. This has been a unboxing first impressions look at the Insignia 11.6 inch Flex Windows 10 tablet.